someday when you're sitting in your bathtub, take a really close look around the tiles, especially the ones lower down, because quite often the grout has begun to break down and drop out. And this is a very pernicious situation because, um, as you can see here, there's quite a bit of grout missing, and I can actually see um, behind the tile because uh, this grout is is really um, it's failing, and you know grout gets old, it it falls out. That's just how it is. It's kind of like teeth. Um, and if you if you aren't vigilant, you'll end up with water seeping down behind the actual tub into the floor, rots the subfloor, causes hundreds and thousands. Well, wait a minute just thousands of dollars of, of damage and also it can end up water can end up coming out in the ceiling on the floor below it could be a mess so this is what you do you go to the uh, hardware store and get yourself a grout saw that's what they look like this is a, a rather a larger one it has a fairly wide burr um, on the blade and then this is a rather more delicate little thing um, it has quite a narrow blade, which is kind of what I need here because the um, grout lines are quite thin. Um, the, the other tool that you'll need is a utility knife, and you've got to wear the safety glasses because this stuff flies around. All right, so all you do, it's, it's called a grout saw because all you do is saw the old grout out of the joint. And if it's already breaking down, as you can see, it doesn't take that long to get it out. I'm going to use a damp rag and just keep wiping the um, dust out of the joint. And there's a lot of stress on the grout right around this area because the water bounces off the human that's in the tub and hits about here and, and leaks down. Okay, just a little bit more to go here. You know, on this one, I'm going to actually try to use my utility blade because it's, uh, I, can just, I think I can just chip it out that way. Now, when you, when you buy the grout, um, you can either mix it yourself or you can buy a, an actual tub of it um, that's ready mixed. And... The nice thing about that is that you can get it with silicone already in it so that when it cures, it doesn't need to be sealed because it's already impermeable. It's got silicone in it. There it is. Mm. Now, there's all sorts of sophisticated ways to apply grout using special masonry tools, but for right now, I'm going to use my finger since I have a really small area. Um, so the first thing to do is dampen the joint. It, it clings better if it's damp. Just take a little bit of the grout on your finger. Mm. Boy, you know, it sure helps to have tight-fitting latex gloves. This has gotten a bit floppy on me. All right, so I got a big gob of it on my finger, and I'm just going to wipe it into the joint. And I'm just, I'm trying to make it just um, flush with the two surfaces of the adjoining tile. When you're wiping the grout to finish it, you have to wipe it in a diagonal direction. Otherwise, the sponge tears the grout out of the joint. So you use that kind of a motion. Um, what it does is it takes a little bit of the grout out with each pass. So you end up with an indentation that will hopefully match the existing ones. If you've used the kind of grout that you mix rather than the kind that's ready mix, you have to seal it. If you have a ledge, that's a real prime candidate for leakage because, um, like you can see here in this corner, water just tends to stand on those places. So you get a standing water pool and that'll break down the grout. So check around your bathtub really carefully, especially if you have a ledge. And um, the neat thing about grout is it can be used for um, all kinds of things. Like if you want to make a stained glass candle, you get a glass and you, you epoxy little pieces of stained glass all around the edges of it. And then you just swipe grout over it and it fills in all the joints and it looks like a little kind of cool thing. So, oh, one other thing. I just need to add this. See this filmy um, substance that's over the tiles? I don't know if you can see it very well. You really have to get that film off. So. Um, 
you, you wipe it with a dry rag, polish it right off. It will stay on the tile forever if you don't get it off, you know, within 20 minutes of finishing your job. Repairing grout is something that is mildly irritating and it, depending on how much of it you have to do, but it's really got to be done, so don't delay. We've come to that part of the show where I like to talk about life's peculiarities. For example, optimism. If you're optimistic when you start a home repair, you're setting yourself up for trouble. That's because you have not computed the statistical probability for failure. You think it is likely to go well. Where you got this idea is from your imagination, because experience shows that no home repair has ever gone particularly well in the past. But for no apparent reason, you are an optimist. If by some miracle you could change this about yourself, you would have the option of being either a realist or a pessimist. Now, a realist would not attempt the repair in the first place because she would know that somebody would just come along and say, I thought you were a little more realistic than to attempt something like that. And that kind of comment gets a realist's goat if they actually had a goat, which they will be quick to point out that they don't. So you are left with being a pessimist. And the glory of being a pessimist is that no matter how badly the repair goes, it'll turn out a lot better than you expected. Until next time on A Repair to Remember, I'm Mag Ruffman.